Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf podcast. Uh, so today I'm talking about living off grid and the fakers out there. Revelator Alf. Um, look, if, if you're anything like me, you you kind of like the simple life. The simple life being that you're not really into technology per se, not really into having lots of possessions or anything like that. It's more about just keeping things really simple, having a simple life as best as possible. Obviously, we all have the modern trappings. Now, what I get annoyed by are people out there who try to convince you that say hey i'm really living a simple life uh i'm you know living in the forest living in the trees living in a van for example you know in a in a camper van type thing uh but they're not really uh basically what they're doing is uh, they're probably just going out for a weekend or going out off for two or three weeks uh and making a whole bunch of videos and then just trying to convince you hey this is my lifestyle uh well, it actually isn't um and they keep on using the term off grid now <clears throat> i watch like you know quite a few videos uh, on youtube and things like that and you know there's always these van life um videos yeah look this is how i've built my van and everything and this is you know i've got solar panels and i've got a fridge you know some of these vans are you know costing 100 grand upwards that's not really off-grid living really that's just spending a load of money so you can go away on a camper camper van holiday um so you know what what is off-grid living for a start is it that you're not in society you just don't live in a house so that makes it off-grid living does it well i'm not so sure um, I, I would say that off-grid living is more to do with um, not actually being bound by the chattels of society in that you're not, uh, you're not earning money per se, you're not paying your taxes, you're not in the, the community, you're away from the community, you know, living on by your own, living like a hermit, living somewhere else, you know, completely remote. That to me is off-grid living. And you're very self-sufficient, so you're just using natural resources uh, to keep yourself going. So let's say a natural resource would be, well, you live in the middle of a forest somewhere, uh, miles and miles from anybody, off the beaten track. So you use, uh, you know, trees or branches, you know, for your firewood. That gives you heat, that gives you, uh, you know, warmth, cooking facilities, let's say. Um, you know, food, you're hunting for food, you know, um, you're killing rabbits or pigeons or whatever it is, or you're eating, I don't know, insects and grubs. For me, that is kind of off-grid living. And it isn't just for a weekend thing, let's say like what Bear Grylls would do, or any of these other TV survivalists would do. Um, this is more your lifestyle. This is what you do. That, for me, is off-grid living. You know, you build a little shack in the middle of nowhere or a or um, a log cabin, let's say. Uh, many years ago, there was a TV program called um, The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. Basically, uh, the story was, it was it's a fictional thing, but he got in trouble with the local law, so he ran off into the mountains, and uh, he befriended a, a little bear, and this bear grew up, so it's about him and Grizzly Adams. It was a great program, all the kids loved it, I loved it as a kid. But essentially, that's off-grid living. He was right in the middle of nowhere. He would trap a few uh, animals, get their furs and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he, he had a water source, a river right next to him. So he had clean water, he had firewood so he could, he, um, you know, heat himself and cook with. That's all he needed. That's off-grid living. Not this going off in a van, uh, in a camper van, and just having all the, the comforts of home, really. Um, oh, guess what? And we've got a laptop, yes, and we're going to make videos about uh, how to live off-grid. Uh, you know, and then we're going to post it on YouTube. Well, you know, okay, first of all, you've got all this camera equipment, and you've got all, uh, you know, your smartphones, let's say, which uh, needed accounts and need addresses and everything like that. Then you need internet addresses internet supply then obviously that needs addresses and then you need bank accounts and you need so can you can you follow my logic here you know then then you've got a van okay or you've got a motorcycle or you've got a a truck or you know a, a, a whatever a four by four so that all needs insurance doesn't it? that all needs an address so 
then, then you're not really off grid then are you because if you've you know need all these things then you're not really off grid you're actually part of the grid you're part of the system you know whether you like it or not now let's just say that these videos were just let's just be honest let's just be honest and, and say look this is not off-grid living this is kind of trying to be a bit more self-sufficient trying to use a bit more resources hey look go on extended camper van holiday this is the kind of thing you can do i've got no problem with that but don't try and pull the wool over my eyes and say hey you know i'm i'm not part of society or whatever you know also a lot of these uh kind of people out there uh they're also on the make as well they're doing things just to make money and just to try and convince you hey look uh um, i'm going to do this really stupid thing to get more views on my youtube and then you can go to my instagram and you can tell me what to do there and then you can go to my patreon account and fund me there and you know if you do this and then you'll get a free gift and all this kind of stuff so you do all of this whilst you're off grid do you mm, not so sure about that either uh you know look if you're going to be honest about it, be honest about it and say, look, you, you do YouTube, you Instagram, whatever. But, you know, because there are ways of uh, earning money, you know, revenue streams. It might be really small revenue streams, but there, there is a potential to earn money uh, online. That's absolutely fine. If you're trying to show people so that there are ways to live more simply, uh, you know, doing that kind of thing. I got no problem with that, but don't try and tell us that what you're doing is completely off grid because it isn't. You're making videos, you're making, you know, whatever, you're taking lots of photos and pictures and everything. That's not off grid living. That is um, giving, uh, you know, you're painting a facade of what off grid living is. You know, I've, I've got a. I've got a, a holiday home, let's say, no, it isn't really. It's a, um, you know, a family home. It's right in the middle of the mountains, uh, you know, as elsewhere. Um, and that is completely away from anybody. There's a neighbour about 100 yards away. There's a few scattered houses, but nobody ever lives there. So when you go there, you are completely isolated, pretty much. Right in the middle of the mountains. Uh, there's white water, a rapid river. I've got a, a well that uh, I get uh, fresh water from. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, I am off grid. But when I go there, I've got electricity. I've got a, a telephone if I if I need it connected. It's not connected, but it's it's connected. Um, you know, I've got uh, well sanitation because I've got uh, the whatever you know the um, all the water all the uh, you know goes into a soil pipe and then goes into a tank outside. Uh, you know I've got access roads uh, so the, there's that kind of thing. There's a town nearby where I can do buy all my shopping. Guess what? In my in my little house I've got um, a fridge and a washing machine all that kind of stuff. So I'm right in the middle of nowhere, but I've got all the comforts at home because it is a house. So. That's not off-grid living, but people might try and tell you that's off-grid living as well. Or let's say somebody might have a house and they'll just turn the camera away from the house and point towards the mountains and they'll build themselves a little shack or whatever. And they'll say, hey, look at my uh, shack, you know, here. But actually what you don't see in the camera shot is uh, all the comforts at home. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of nonsense there. I mean, I, you see these videos, as I say, there's lots of them about. There's lots of, um, you know, these, I, I will call them fakers, these off-grid fakers, because they, they are trying to tell you and, and me that uh, what they are doing is completely legit. It isn't completely legit. It's a load of nonsense. We've had this for years in the in the motorcycling world as well, there are various characters who would say, hey, look, I'm living off grid or I'm completely, you know, doing this. And you think, this, that's what a great lifestyle that is. Traveling the world, do, you know, being completely off grid, complete self-sufficient and everything like that. And then you think, and then you start digging a little bit deeper. And then you start thinking, well, actually, how do they pay for that? Or how do they get the insurance for the bike? Or how do they pay for the fuel? Or... Uh, you know, what, what are they doing to support themselves along the way? You know, all this kind of stuff. How, how do they get through the visas, you know, for different countries? 
And then you start digging a little bit deeper and you think, actually, it's, this is a load of bollocks. This is not off-grid living on a motorcycle at all. This is not a survivalist motorcycle. This is just going for an extended tour. You get, you're going on a world tour, which is absolutely fine. And you're, you're living to bare bones, that's fine. But that's not off-grid living either. Um, <laughs> you, you'll see lots of people on, on the YouTube trying to sell a lifestyle to you, trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And it just isn't so. It just isn't true. Uh, you know, look... I, I could go and buy some woodland uh, over here in the UK because there's lots of woodland uh, available for sale. It costs a bloody fortune, mind you, but you know there is uh, plots of land, let's say, in the forest. And you can find a track up there and you can go up there for a, a weekend on your motorcycle or on foot or whatever it is and take a tent with you and go camping for the weekend or go camping for a week or for a month. Well, tell you what, that's off-grid living. But that's just an off-grid holiday. In fact, everybody who's ever climbed into a tent somewhere uh, without electricity, <laughs> without electricity hookup, um, you just got your little gas stove or you have to make a little campfire. And this is pre-mobile phones and pre-checking your Twitter and your Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And pre-making bloody videos, let's uh, be honest. And let's face it, I'm making a video now. Look, I'm going to face into the camera here. That's... Um, going to be up on YouTube, uh, you know, but this is all technology, you know, that, uh, anyway, so this is all before that, and now that's off-grid living, but it's temporary, isn't it, but you're not going to climb into a tent and then uh, try and tell the world, hey, look, this is off-grid off living, because people are going to look at you and go, what are you on about? What you what the hell are you going on about? You're just in a tent for a couple of weeks. You know what's the problem? You know we do that every bloody summer, or we do that every spring. You know I do that with three kids uh, and a wife who doesn't want to be there. You know, uh, but no, you can't even go uh, camping anymore. You have to go glamping, don't you? So that's it. You know everything has to be brought with you, all the comforts at home. You know I yearn for the time where I could just, you know get on my bike whenever, get a, get in a tent and just head off somewhere um, and just head off into the hills and just be there for, a, you know, a few weeks or whatever. Well, you'd like to think so, but the reality is probably after a couple of days, you'd be like going, um, what do I do now? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I haven't got my phone or I haven't got this or I haven't got that. And I, I consider myself to be somebody quite self-sufficient, uh, self-reliant. Uh, and I was brought up that way, and I was brought up in the countryside, and I was brought up in the, on a farm as well. So you kind of get that built-in ability to be able to do things um, quite quickly and to be able to uh, come up with ideas just to overcome uh, a problem, find a solution to a problem, uh, you know, on a basic level of living. You know, but many, most people aren't like that. Most people don't have that ability to be able to do that. So let's say, you know, the notion of just being able to go out into the hills or something without anything, you know, virtually anything, let's say, you know, just going off with the basics, um, you know, th they wouldn't be able to handle it. Now, it really depends of what kind of person you are, of course. It depends if you like looking at an open fire, you know, if that becomes your TV for the night, you know, if you like the peace and tranquility away for the, you know, the, the maddening crowd. I'm one of those kind of people. I'm not an isolationist. I don't like to be permanent isolation, but I do like to be on a temporary nature, uh, temporary, uh, temporarily away from these kinds of uh, things, you know, modern trappings of life. But to say that I'm an odd grid, off grid uh, survivalist would be complete bunkum. You know, it's just, it's just wrong. And that's the problem. There's so many people out there who will try and convince you uh, that's what their life is about. And it isn't. It just isn't. Um, and you've only got to dig a little bit deeper. You've only got to think, well, how did they fund that? How do they insure that uh, vehicle? Where do they get it maintained? All this kind of stuff. Now, if you're saying to me, look, I'm going to live in my converted bus or in my van, you know, my camper van, whatever, that's fine. And make videos about, um, you know, hey, this is like living in a van, van life. You know, this is what we have to do. This is how we pay for it. This is how we earn our money. Uh, you know, thanks for all the support. I've got no problem with that as well. But that isn't off-grid. 
is it? You know, so be honest about it. Be honest and say this is not off grid. Um, and th this off grid uh, notion, you know, I, th I think this all came from a, a Terminator film many years ago, when uh, you know the kid, the young uh, John, uh, was saying he's been living off grid. You know, off off the grid uh, of the Cyberdyne systems, whatever they're called, uh, the the network. You know, that was off grid. You know, so everybody's coined this phrase off grid, off grid. You know. And then it became the whole rise of these survivalist programs, you know, the Bear Grylls stuff, the Ray Mears stuff. You know, and every country has their survivalists. And when I was a kid, I used to watch an Australian program called the Bush, uh, Bush Tucker Man. And he was brilliant. He'd go out into the outback uh, in Australia and start eating wild things and all this kind of stuff and talk about stories of survivals and stuff. So this Bear Grylls stuff is nothing new, really. Um, this Bush Tucker guy was doing it years ago. And I'm sure there were people before him who were doing it as well. You know, but then you get all these other people, you know, weird, weird, weird people who think the world is going to end now and they're prepping for the, you know, the zombie ap apocalypse. You know, and it's just like where, you know, they've got mountains of food and they're, you know, they've built a shack or, or, or a fortress somewhere and, um, you know, underground bunker and it's full of food and rations and everything like that. And you think, you know, well, what a complete waste of time. <laughs> you just, uh, and then they arm, the, you know, especially in America as well, they arm themselves to the teeth as if they're, you're going to fight off the Russians or something like that. And you think, what the hell are these people on? You know, absolute nuts, absolute nuts. You think, you know, if you're going to be an off-grid liver, if you're going to be something, you know, you're going to have to, basically what you're going to have to do is remove yourself from modern living and modern way of thinking. You're going to have to transport you back, yourself back 100 years, let's say, or 150 years, and then put yourself into that lifestyle. And to say, right, we are going to be completely removed and we're going to go to that life. And so therefore, you're going to have to research what they're like. Now, there was a film a few years ago called, um, it's one of those M. Night Shyamalan films. Is it The Village or something like that? Where a group of people, um, essentially, I don't want to ruin the plot, but basically... Uh, a group of people were living in the forest and they were, it was modern times outside of the forest, but inside the forest, it was as if they were like in the 1900s or something like that. Um, and there's a whole story surrounded it. But essentially, you know, this is what it is. They were living as if they were in that period. Everything was period correct. The way they were functioning as a community was period correct. They weren't faking it. They didn't all have mobile phones. They didn't have electricity. There were, you know, there, there wasn't any, uh, you know, any access or ability to be able to access the outside world. It was everything was contained, and each generation that was being born within that community was being held within that community in terms of the the mentality of that community. A little bit like the Amish community in the United States. However, that has been diluted somewhat as well already but you know so that is one of those one of those you know types of scenarios what you have to sort of think about if you're going to go off grid living to say well actually it's you have to remove yourself from the modern way you have to remove yourself from the modern things so it's almost like um you have to be like um a reginald perrin you know you have to go to the beach and for those of you who don't know who reginald perrin is um tv program many years ago called fall and rise of reginald perrin where basically the, the opening credits of the tv program was that he stripped off uh, on the beach and then he ran off into the sea in fact his own death type thing um and there was a stories about him afterwards but uh, basically, that's what you need to do. You need to go to the beach. You need to strip off everything. You need to be naked in many ways, not literally, but uh, ideologically, and uh, you know, run off into the sea and you know, start a new life. That's what off grid living is. You have to move away. You have to, in fact, you know, if you want to go off on your motorcycle. Or, or go off in a van or whatever, that's not really off-grid living, is it? Because you've still got the modern life attached to you. You have to be away from it. Uh, so the only way you're going to do it is off foot, uh, on foot or uh, you know, on a horse or something like that. 
But let's say you still want to keep a little bit of uh, your modern life, your motorcycle, your van, or whatever, your 4 by 4 and you want to go and live in the hills. Uh, well, you know, that, that's absolutely fine. But it's, again, you're, you're, you can say you're simplifying your life and you're going to earn your, a living because you're going to have to be able to support yourself unless, you know, you own land and, you know, you don't have to pay... You don't earn anything, so you don't have to pay taxes, uh, and you don't have to. Well, it really depends where you live in the world whether you would have to pay local taxes for where you live, because uh, that's all part of the issue here. I mean, let's say in the UK, if you wanted to go and do that, build a shack somewhere, first of all, it's whether they would allow you to build anything hand built, you know, on land that you already own, which is ludicrous, isn't it? And like property taxes, you know, the council tax that we have over here in the UK. Uh, and then, you know, it's a, well, w would you be allowed to even do that? Even though you have nothing from society, you would have, you know, you, you don't have fire and rescue uh, services. So, you know, they'd never be able to get to you. Um, you don't have police because, you know, it's only you up there. And the only crime you're going to commit is against yourself, probably. Um, so, you know, who cares? No, nobody's going to be interested in you. And they'd never find you anyway because you're right in the middle of nowhere. You don't have electricity uh, off the main grid. You don't have water, gas off the main grid or anything like that because you've got your own uh, fuel supply and everything. So the question is, why do you need to pay a council tax, a community tax? You know, it's, it's absolutely absurd, but they will make it. They'll find a way of making you pay. And that's one of the things, isn't it? There are only, you know, uh, two things that are assured in life were well, death because that comes to us all and taxes <laughs> so it's a uh, death and taxes that's the only thing um, that uh, everybody has to uh, you know factor in uh, and there's no escaping it in certainly in this country anyway possibly if you go in the middle of nowhere in other big countries so you can really disappear and I suppose this leads on to the next question can you ever truly disappear in the modern world you know, can you head off into the mountains, whatever? I mean, I, I don't think you could because I think there's always some, going to be somebody who will spot you um, in a small country, let's say like where we are in the UK. Possibly, yeah, in, in, in the US, in big places like Russia and stuff like that. Possibly. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you could because if there are vast expanses of land that's untapped, that's, uh, you know, away from people, but the chances are, at some point, so, you know, you're going to have to hide from people if you want to be completely isolated and completely, completely off grid. You're going to have to have the skills to be able to do things uh, and, and, and fend for yourself. And you're going to have to, you know, as I say, transport yourself back 150 years where you would have to kill for food, you know, where you'd have to forage for food, where you'd have to, you know, come up with ideas for fresh water or for, to scavenge for fresh water, that kind of thing. So in the terms of those kind of survivalist programs, Bear Grylls programs, Rain Mears, whatever it is, you know, all those kind of programs are really informative because they can teach the 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 average person okay that gives you an idea of what you would need to do but you can't have both worlds you can't have you know all the trappings of modern life and still pretend to be you know going off grid it's just absurd it's an absurd notion now this also comes back to uh, why people think that their lives are more important than anybody else's or not that's probably that's unfair isn't it no, and not more important why their lives are more interesting than anybody else's um because people tend to latch on to private stories personal stories and sometimes the you know these uh, social commentators social influencers youtubers whatever you want to call them bloggers uh they will you know give you start off with a, a really interesting concept let's say and say okay we want to talk about how we live in a van or we how i ride around the world on my mo motorcycle or how i live you know in the forest whatever but unfortunately the story actually gets old quite quickly and they realize that themselves let's say if i wanted to try and show you my life so my life would be uh motorcycles i go off into my 
uh, holiday home, let's say, uh, for example, in the mountains. <clears throat> let's say I wanted to ride there. And then when I get there, you know, I turn the camera away from the house, uh, which I've done in the past. <laughs> and I've, you know, made videos about how to start fires, how to cook and open fires, all that kind of stuff. Because I actually find that really interesting. I actually love natural, simple camping. I'm not claiming off grid. I just like this natural camping uh, type issue. Um, you know, so you know, I'm I'm giving you the illusion. Look, this is what you can do, and you know, if you want to start a fire, this is how you do it. If you want to cook, this is how you do it. But then you kind of run out of ideas quite quickly. And then it's like, right, okay, what, what else do I talk about? Oh, I talk about uh, getting water. So you make a video about water. Then you talk about uh, heat. Then you talk about getting heat. You know, so you, know, you kind of keep on expanding, you know, the area in which you're talking about, you know, this off-grid living or this simple life living. But then it dawns on you that actually you've got nothing else to say. You've got nothing else to show people about your life because really a simple life is actually the beauty of off-grid. The beauty of a simple life is that it is simple, that it is com uncomplicated, that you're not um, relying on anybody else or talking to anybody else or, you know, falling into uh, the, the rat race. You know, you've got out the rut, you've got out the rat race, you know, you're away from it all. But it's a very simple, serene life. That doesn't translate well to YouTube. That doesn't translate well to, um, you know, storytelling, you know, that kind of thing. It does initially. It does initially for, you know, just a, an hour or so, something like that. It might make a good book. Uh, it might make a good, you know, film, you know, um, uh, but, you know, being trapped on a desert, deserted island or something like that, and you have to fend for yourself until uh, you, you're rescued by a passing boat. Oh, Wilson, Wilson, you know that kind of thing. Uh, but look, it's it's it's, it's going to run its course very quickly, and these people realise that. Then they come up with bullshit just to keep the myth going, just to keep the illusion going, and that's what it is. And that's what I think anyway, because, you know, you've got these people, as I say, who, who start off, I'm sure, with good intentions, or maybe they don't, or they just jump on the bandwagon and think, hey, do you know, and then you think, well, it, it, it's clickbait, it's, it's nonsense, and it's, you know, you've got people out there who are claiming a simple life, let's say, you go, go go on YouTube and watch, just tap in van life or, I don't know, off-grid living or something like that. And you'll soon come across videos uh, where people are making them very cinematic. They've got multiple camera angles. They've got, uh, you know, um, a, a couple, let's say, they're living off-grid, um, supposedly. <coughs> and, <coughs> and it's all very loving and em embracing and... Um, a little bit racy at times, uh, dare I say, unnecessarily racy, I, w I would say. And then it's uh, moving on from that, then you start getting aerial shots and drone shots, and think, who the frig has a drone if you're off-grid living? I mean, what the bloody hell? You know, you kind of get fed up with these drone shots, and you kind of get fed up with these B-roll shots, you know, with, with people making their videos sometimes. It's just like, you know, everybody's jumped onto this bandwagon. You've got to make it really cinematic and great. And don't get me wrong, it looks great. But it only looks great if there's a story is worth being told in the first place. But if it's a nonsense video, then who the hell cares? And don't get me wrong, I've got, I've got a handful of subscribers and they're loyal and, you know, I really appreciate and value every single one of them. I absolutely do. And thanks for the support. But these guys got, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of subscribers and followers and because they've fallen into this trap of being like lemmings and, and, you know, living on every word that these people, these young people are telling them. It's absolute nonsense. Don't people realise that this is all a load of bollocks. It is a complete load of bollocks. You know, this is not a simple life. This is not off-grid living. 
this is a, this is a van life where you're you know trying to show the world hey look at how beautiful we are and how fantastic our life is and how free you know let's all get back to wearing robes and living like dollars it's absolute load of bollocks you know it's like the um it's like the save mother earth campaigners you know who uh, actually drive to uh you know protest you know drive their cars their polluting cars to go and protest something uh or who was it recently who uh, flew over from the united states all the way to london to go on to one of these gl uh, global uh save the planet environmental rallies uh, was it emma thompson i think it was emma thompson wasn't it she flew all the way halfway across the world to go and, and she was telling everybody hey save the world save the world so anyway but you know that that's that's the way uh, it is these days. That's the way uh, you know people think they they are constantly trying to get into the media. You know, have a little sound bite, and you know when you dig a little deeper, most people are just talking bollocks. Basically, they are talking nonsense. Um, you know, you could say from any walk of life, you could say that at some point there is a, an element of truth but it's shrouded in a load of uh, dung, really. Um, and especially when it comes to these kind of videos, these kind of people who are trying to, they're trying to give you uh, an impression of what their actual life is, uh, but it isn't. The, their life isn't like that. Or it's only like that temporarily. As I say, I've got no problem with people saying, hey, look, if you want to go off, you know, living very simply for a few weeks, let's do this. You know, this is what I do. Every couple of weeks, I go and do this, you know, on my motorbike, I go off into the hills, or I go, you know, in my camper van, or I go in my car or whatever. That's great. Or you show, look, these are the problems of, of me uh, spending the weekend in my um, Ford Focus or in my, you know, Jeep or whatever it is. Uh, look, you know, oh, God, I had to wash myself with a flannel. You know, <clears throat> now that is kind of videos which I watch and I kind of value because you're not taking yourself too seriously. But you're trying to say, hey, look, here's a, a bit, bit of information. If this is what you want to do. I want people to be honest with me. That's what I want. I want people to be honest with me and say, look, do you want to go camping? Do you want to go camping? Do you want to go to a motorcycle rally on your bike? Yeah, in the in the middle of summer. That's right. Go camping in the middle of summer, in a scorching hot weekend in the middle of the field. That's right. And as soon as you arrive there, you're sweating your nuts off. Uh, your tent is going to be like 100 degrees. Uh, you're going to get sunburned. Uh, you're going to be thirsty. You're going to be smelly. There's no toilet facilities. You're probably going to pee yourself. And a little bit of poo is going to stick to your underpants. That kind of thing. Um, you're going to be... Flies are going to be swarming around you by the end of day two. You're going to get onto your bike and you're going to basically reeking all the way home as soon as you get home that's it the whole all the plants around your front door are just going to collapse dead uh, because of the infection that you're bringing home now that's that's reality that's the reality of uh you know off-grid living you know simple living going camping let's say um what's the reality you know give me some real life stuff about camper van um <coughs> about hey look i've got a porta potty in my in my camper van really really so under your seat in your camper van you've got a porta potty really i don't know about you guys but if you go on one of these uh, uh caravan type porta potty type things um it stinks it absolutely reeks and doesn't matter how beautiful your poop smells it still stinks so you're going to say in a closed environment in a camper van and not in especially on a hot day uh, you're going to go to the toilet in your camper van and then you're going to just live there i don't think so you're going to want to do that miles away from where, where you're going to be sleeping at night or driving around at night absolute nonsense all this stuff you know so look there is lots of value in lots of these kinds of programs. There's all these kinds of shows, uh, videos, whatever it is. There's lots of good value. But be honest. 
give us a real you know real life you know and the pros and cons of what things are actually like and you just say look you can do this you can you know have your own poop porta potty inside your caravan or your camper van but actually do you know what it's really not a good idea and you only ever use that in an emergency if you really need to if you're a bloke just go off into the bushes if you're in the middle of nowhere just go and duck behind a tree whether you're a male or a female you know just get get, get that away from the camper van get that away from where you're sleeping you know if it's um you know if you're in a tent or something like that you know hey think about right okay let's go off in a tent for the weekend well have you ever tried to put pegs in the ground uh, which is rock solid and you haven't got any way of banging them into the ground or you get the poxy little pegs that come with the tent that bend at the any very first sign of um, resistance yeah you what you need to do is go and get the real heavy duty pegs and you need to get a big mallet and carry that with you as well so all this adds to the weight so that you're going to be carrying around but it's worth it you know, these are the kind of things that you need to be <laughs> told. You don't need to be told, hey, life is really good, you know, uh, living in the trees and everything. Absolutely, it, you're selling a dream that just isn't real. You said, as I say, it's a facade. They're painting a facade. They're painting a life that they're not living and it's a life that you're not going to live either. You might be able to live it for a few days. You might be able to do it for, you know, a couple of weeks. But that's not a lifestyle. That's not a lifestyle that's a bed of roses because it is just isn't you know there's there's lots of there's lots of stuff that people do that is you know you could say leaning towards a simple life you but you know you don't have to palm it off as being um you know something that is going to benefit the the whole of mankind is going to benefit uh, uh, the environment whatever and uh, you know you're going to be detached from the modern world because it just isn't true because as soon as you start using anything from the modern world then that's when you're back on grid in my opinion you know and being on the grid let's say is being attached to it somehow you know there's a paper trail there's an, a digital trail you know back to the uh to the modern world look i'm making as i said i'm making this uh, podcast right now i'm making a video you know this is all linked to the digital world you know i'm doing it from a base i you know that there is a link to where i physically am there is no way on hell in hell that i am uh doing this off grid if I went into the middle of the trees, which I sometimes do, I do a lot of riding through forests and or go off the beaten track, I love it. And I'm probably off grid, possibly, for about a few minutes. Not even that. I'm not even off grid. I've just realised I'm not even off grid for even one second when I'm road, uh, riding off road because I've usually got my phone with my off road mapping uh, in front of me and I'm just trying to figure out where I am. You know, so I'm always connected. I'm always connected with something. You know, my bike, my bike is still that connection with the modern life. You know, so, you know, and, and then, you know, I'm really right in the middle of nowhere. And I'll tell you what, it's the, the strangest things you find when you go off road right in the middle of nowhere, when you go off piste, when you go off the, off the beaten track. I found deserted houses, um, you know, abandoned vehicles. I mean, really old vehicles that are completely rusted out. Oh, old farm implements, uh, uh, old old buildings, uh, old shacks, old lean-tos, uh, old um, uh, kind of um, man-made uh, wooden structure. You know, the kind of survivalist structures, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, like a, like a shelter type thing, just made out of sticks, whatever. You know, all, all that kind of stuff. You, know, you find all this kind of stuff. I found hidden lakes that are not marked on maps, or not, not that I could find anyway. Um, you know, there's um, in the middle of forests, you know, the big massive pits. And you think, well, you know, what the hell's there? I found caves. Um, you know, it's, it's just, there's an amazing amount of stuff going on out there when you're off the beaten track but to say that when i go there i am off grid no 
what I have to do is abandon my bike, abandon my, you know, I have to be like Reginald Perry and I have to strip off, you know, ditch my phone, ditch my GPS, ditch everything and just walk off naked into the, um, into the forest, you know, like I'm naked and afraid, just walking off, uh, you know, that's how, what, that's what off grid living is. And there's a guy who does, um, you know, these kind of survivalist programs, uh, again, uh, he was another guy, what's he called? Um, Stafford, Ed Stafford, and he was really good because he made a series of programs where he would go off, be completely naked, dropped off in the middle of nowhere, he'd have cameras to record himself, like GoPros and stuff like that, and the only idea was to survive and then to thrive, you know, start actually being able to live comfortably in a kind of survivalist mode. But whilst he would always do it, it's only ever for a, a week or so, and obviously he's not going to give up his whole life, but that's the point, you can only it's only short term that you can do this. You know, to actually do this for the rest of your life, that's something completely different. You know, you know, to live completely off grid, naked, you know, making clothes out of, you know, banana leaves, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, living like a tribes person, uh, you know, away from a tribe, you know, trying to fend for yourself, that's off grid. You know, not making videos about it, not making podcasts, not uh, taking lots of selfies and say, hey, look, you know, this is me off grid. Um, it, it is absolute nonsense, isn't it? And, and I think I've gone on about this a long, long enough, but it just annoys me. It just annoys me when you, you want to be, you want to watch videos that will educate you a little bit but it isn't it's not educating at all it's not teaching you about simple lives or how to how to start fires or, or, or whatever what it is it's about selling you a lifestyle that it just it doesn't exist and it's the notion of this bullshit simple lifestyle that people pretend to want to live but they're never going to live it because they, you know, they're just so wrapped up in their own little world. Uh, you know, they're, you know, they're usually young, um, attractive people who are trying to sell a lifestyle. Hey, look, this is, this is my, this is my beautiful life with my beautiful husband or beautiful wife, and you know, we're so blessed and everything like that. What a load of crock! What a biggest load of rubbish! I've never heard so much nonsense in my life. You know, and you know they're not the only ones. I gotta say, I'm not gonna just pick on van life people. There are lots of people out there. Lots of they're trying to sell their lifestyle. They're trying to sell their family life, and I, I just think, why would you want the world to know about your family life? Who cares about your family life? But the thing is, people do. People do care about other people's family life. Why? Why would you send that, that? For me, that's private. That's a private life. Why would you want to sell your private life? Now, my interests, for example, you know, motorcycling, football, going off the beaten track, exploring. Yeah, I want to share that. I share that with you. I share that in my blogs, in my videos, YouTube videos, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> And the photos that I produce on the website, I share that because it's of interest to me, but I thought it might be of interest to you. And maybe people have the same notion, say, well, this is my family life, and I, you know, I want other people to be interested in my family life. But isn't that just a form of exhibitionism? I can't even say it properly. Exhibitionism. Isn't that putting your family, your children, in front of a camera to the open of the whole world? That's just that's just wrong for me that's just weird and i think they're trying to address a few of these issues now and lots of people are running scared in terms because they've got a whole income stream and a big income stream based upon their putting their family life and their children on the on the <clears throat> for the whole world you know on online for the whole world to see and it's just wrong you know if if you're going to make if you're going to make videos then make videos for the right reason. If you're going to put yourself online, you know, but don't involve other people or don't try and sell us a false lifestyle or don't try and sell a life that is just just wrong. You know, I, I, I say there's lots of absurdity in everything that we do. There's lots of absurdity in the whole modern life. You know, modern life is rubbish. I've said that for a long, long time. The way people think, the way people act, the way people think that they can go into society and act in society the way people can just go off for a weekend and just 
take all their crap with them and just leave it lying around as opposed to tidying up after themselves. That's not saving the planet. You know, these are the same people who make a bloody um, survivalist, environmental friendly uh, video, let's save the planet, and they've just left all their rubbish uh, lying around. Uh, or they've just, they've just gone to the local shop and bought loads of crap and, and just left it lying around. Or they use lots of uh, hairspray or whatever, you just so they look good on camera. Or, or they travel, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles to make an environmentally friendly bloody video and then all of a sudden they get back in their gas guzzler and they have to go and they flow off across the world again uh, just to do something else. It's absolute nonsense, isn't it? It's absolute nonsense. You know, they're pulling the wool over your eyes, <laughs> pulling the wool over your eyes and they've, well, they've never pulled the wool over my eyes because it's a load of bollocks. Um, look, <clears throat> these, these live videos these lifestyle videos I think are are interesting to a point they're interesting whilst they're informative they're interesting whilst they give um, the bare bones of what's actually going on or they give the reality check of what somebody's life is about there are a couple of out there that, that whilst I don't agree with the things that they say or the politics uh, out there and um, there's one guy I watch on um, on uh, the internet it's called uh, Backroads Biker as well and he talks about off-grid living and everything like that but he kind of talks about it in lots of different ways. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the things that he says, certainly about his politics or anything like that. I'm not interested in all that kind of stuff, and I certainly don't agree with it. But some of the stuff that he has talked about, some of the things that he's talked about in terms of the absurdity of motorcycling life and also, but, you know, off-grid living and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, but I've held similar views as well. I've made videos about you know, doing things in a natural way. And I'm, I'm probably going to make uh, a lot more videos in the future about this kind of stuff, you know, my take on it. But it's never to say, hey, this is off-grid living. This is purely to say, you know, hey, look, this is what you can do. This is what I enjoy doing. Uh, you know, let's... I'm you know, let's let's build a fire. Let's do a bit of cooking. Let's uh, you know find see if we can find some food around here. You know that kind of thing. Um, but to claim that you know you, this is your lifestyle, it's a load of bollocks. You know, as I say, there are a few out there which I, I think are you know half half decent. They're they're okay, uh, but most are complete nonsense. When it's kind of wrapped around a lifestyle one now. There are lots of great videos out there, lots of great video content producers, um, channels, bloggers, whatever, who are sticking to the script, who are sticking to uh, showing, being informative, educating, saying, look, hey, if you want to do this, this is what you can do. If you want to build a fire, there. if you want to cook here, there. if you want to find uh, water there, if you want to build a shack here, you know, this is just teaching you, look, this is what you do, this is how you do it. But they're not trying to show you, hey, look, I've got a lifestyle and I'm living off grid and I'm living in the trees, man, and all that kind of stuff. Bollocks. You know, they're not saying that at all. They're just giving you ideas of what you can do. Other people, obviously, uh, are uh, trying to uh, sell their lifestyle, sell their whatever it is, <laughs> you know, and you despair with some of these people because you think, well, who the hell is falling for this crap? But I've got to say, there's got to be people out there who are falling for it. There's got to be people out there who are thinking, "Hey, yeah, I, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go with that. I really like that. Yeah, whatever these people say, I'm really going to love." And then they start, you know, trying to sell their wares and, you know, trying to sell. Okay, look, you're living. Here's the thing, right? You're living off, off a, on a motorcycle, or you're living in a van somewhere, then you're completely off grid. And I understand that you can live off-grid, let's say, if you want to try, really try and fool me, that you're living off-grid with internet connection and insurance and video cameras and laptops. I understand that. But then you've got a shop as well. I've got a shop. It's a very nice shop, thank you very much. And go check it out on the website, you know, revelatorhalf.com. It's a Teespring shop, that's right. So I've got lots of T-shirts and everything like that. Yes, it helped if I can sell anything, if I ever got a sale. Uh, it would help to continue funding get more equipment for the channel that kind of thing it's it's clear cut it's it's up 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 front and it's uh there for all to see 
But these people are out there saying, no, we're off grid living, but I've got a shop as well. Oh yeah, you can buy my t-shirts and you can buy this and you can buy that. Really? Okay, well that's not really off grid living then, is it? Because you've got the shop, you've got a shop front, so it's a digital shop. Oh, okay, so you don't actually, just like me, you know, I don't carry any stock, it goes from directly from the, the printers. Okay, right, so, you know, again, it's the absurdity of it all, isn't it? You're trying to claim one thing, but actually you're living a completely different lifestyle. Because, let's face it, we're all trying to... <clears throat> In, at some level, if you do this blogging, if you do this kind of YouTubing, if you do this kind of writing, which I do a lot of writing as well, you know, it's about ideally that you want to share your ideas, but hopefully, just like any artist, just you know, at some point, you know, you love doing it, you enjoy doing it, and that's the the point. You should enjoy what you're doing first and foremost. You should enjoy sharing what you're doing. Um, Look, do you think I enjoy uh, <laughs> sitting in a, you know, a wooden shed uh, making videos and making podcasts? Well, actually, I do. <laughs> uh, a little, little bit weird. But, you know, uh, would, I, um, would I say this is, uh, you know, I'm trying to say to you, look, I'd love being in my shed and uh, this is where I want to be. Oh, no, I don't want to be outside riding my bike. No, that, that's, a, that's a lie, isn't it? So, you know, these people who are trying to say, hey, look, look, look at my lifestyle, isn't it great? You know, yeah, that's only half the story, and we know that. You know, and, and people are trying to earn a crust, which I don't mind at all, I don't mind that at all, but just be honest. Just be honest, say, look, I'm making videos, um, you know, you can go to my website, let's say, for example, myself from this podcast you know this podcast the podcasts are available on spotify on itunes on soundcloud that everything's from the website i'm gonna you know i'm i'm promoting myself now look i'm promoting it's it's from the website revelator.com look hey look there's a shop and guess what you can go on the youtube channel and there's lots of youtube you can fund me from this patreon or paypal or whatever it is but you're being honest with people. You're being honest with what you're doing. And say, so if you like my content, if you like, if you want to see more, if you want to help me develop to produce more content, to keep this going, then help support me. I'll be honest with you about that. And there's a lot of other YouTubers who, uh, and content creators, or whatever that you want to call them, who are honest. But there are lots of other people who are just not honest. It is... It is a it is a charade. It's a charade to say, look, this is my lifestyle, and you know, the Instagram is one of the worst for this because you've got a whole generation. I've talked about this before. You've got a whole generation of kids, young girls who just flaunt themselves on there, but then you can actually have embedded little links within this, and that's what they're aiming for, so they can get little sponsorship deals from all these other companies. And say, hey, link to this other, you know, Instagram account, which is a company. It's just selling shorts or bras or you know necklaces or whatever, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's look. If if you want to say that, hey, look, put a placard up in front of your chest and say, you know, I am sponsored by this. If you click here, I might get some money. You know, that kind of thing. But it's all a little bit subliminal. It's all a little bit product placements. It's all a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, you don't really need to for me to tell you that I'm trying to sell you something. You know, I'm just gonna, you know, try and earn money, you know, on the sly. No, nobody falls for that anymore. No, nobody, you know, it's just, it's just like having ads on videos and stuff like that. You know, YouTube are earning money. Um, whoever, what other platformers are earning money off you, off your content, you may earn. Uh, you know half a penny on on the dollar or not even that uh, you know a quarter of a penny on the dollar for every uh, ad that is clicked but the re you know it's so small somebody else is earning money off yours you know off your content uh, that's even if you're eligible to earn money off the content then so you have to you know people are thinking right well, I, I can earn money online i don't have to get a proper job uh, but then people don't even realise what a proper job is. They don't even realise that doing this kind of content creation, digital creation with YouTube, podcasts, whatever it is, blogs, is a job itself. It takes a lot of, you know, uh, processing power. It takes a lot of uh, thought. It takes a lot of, 
Uh, it takes a lot of ideas, you know, time to generate you know, these ideas. Uh, and then it's just the market, you know, self-marketing, you know. So this is all part of, of being it, being a YouTube, being a content creator, being a digital person, if you like. Um, and if you can ma mix that with something that you really enjoy, which I, which I try to do, then that's something that you're, you're sharing with the world as well. So you're, you're sharing something that you really enjoy. You Hopefully you, that's given a bit of information that people might find useful. But the trade-off is that you want to try and earn some money from it. That's absolutely fine. I've got no problem with that at all because that's no different from you uh, you know, owning a shop or opening up a, an out, outdoor centre where you're going to teach people how to do things you know, in, a, in a physical form. You're just doing it in a digital form. What I do object to is people trying to sell me their lifestyle, which is a load of bullshit, and then trying to sell me a notion which uh, they're not even living themselves. You know, that's that's what I would say anyway. But look, I've I've rambled on for too long. But I would say, look, let's just recapping van life. This van life, motorcycle, you know, camping life uh, is a, a load of bollocks in in the, in the most sense. Um, look, you can do it short term. Of course you can. We can all do that. We can all go camping. Who hasn't gone camping for the short term and just not had anything, you know? But we know that it's short term. You know, that's not off grid. That's just lit roughing it for a few days. Uh, it's not glamping. This is proper camping, you know. And not even on a campsite. Let's just go off into a field somewhere. Let's just go off into the woods somewhere. You know, go off down a beaten track. Ask a farmer if you can go and stay in his field or whatever. Or the woodland owner just going to say, can we just pitch our tent here for the night? You know, light a campfire, that kind of stuff. You know, that's that's proper you know living but it's only temporary you're only going to do it for a weekend that's not off-grid living you know these we're not survivalists we're not you know bear grills types head stafford types whatever bush tucker types you know i'm not going to start uh, eating would you two beetles or whatever they're called would you two beetles would you beetles leave in the comments below or, or whatever um you know send me an email about <laughs> what these are, grubs are called you know, but that's absolutely disgusting. I mean, who would, in their right mind would want to eat anything like that? Yeah, you've got to be absolutely starving or whatever to be want to eat anything like that. It makes all good TV or whatever, but who wants to eat that? Please, honestly. You know, and it's like, look, look you, you do this thing or they're trying to show you what a simple life is. Well, if you want to show people what a simple life is, show a simple life. Don't show all your mod cons in your van, in your camper van or whatever, because that isn't a simple life, you know. But look, they are for me a big bunch of fakers, you know. There's so much of this online. There's so much of this in social media. That's why I'm not a big fan of social media. Full stop. I, I in many ways, I despise it. In many ways, I, I, I despise the the, the fact that it takes people out of their actual lives and they're just living off this social media bubble um they're putting too much emphasis on it you know i despise the fact there are people out there uh pretending uh, that their life is somehow so much more interesting uh i i can i'm concerned about people who um are putting too much time and emphasis onto the social media life and not living their lives properly or you know just trying to attention seeking all the time it's a concern it's a worry um and i and i think that you know the more this goes on the more people are going to get detached from what real life should be about so if you went back a hundred years uh you know people were living normal they were living they were living life in a normal way a hundred years ago yeah that, I mean that's the first world war let's go let's go 150 years ago let's say something like that yeah okay look we can talk about sanitation we could talk about healthcare and all that kind of stuff of course I know that and say so, you know that the way modern life is in those terms obviously it's a lot better but what I'm talking about is just being connected with the world being connected with the environment you know having a better of understanding of 
where you are, where food comes from, all that kind of stuff. You've got legions of people who have no idea where food comes from, where meat comes from. They they think that it just comes wrapped up in a in a you know in polythene or in in cardboard or whatever in a supermarket. That's where meat comes from. Absolute. They don't know anything. They don't know anything about real life. And they don't want to know. That's the thing. They don't want to know because all they're interested in is, is selling you a fake life, selling you uh, something that will look good in a magazine or look good in a... Uh, in, oh, I've got a... Wee, oh, wee. But they're just more concerned about, uh, you know, selling you a life that just doesn't uh, exist uh, and uh, trying to pretend that you know, their life is so simple and so off grid, which it just isn't. In fact, it's on grid, completely on grid. Anyway, thank you for listening to this uh, Revelator Alf podcast, Living Off Grid Fakers. Catch you on the next one, whenever that is. Cheers now. Revelator Alf.